Well, there were a series of studies done by a group in France, and um, it got a lot of publicity because the studies had an adverse effect. And any study that produces an adverse effect is likely to have more publicity than studies which say it's safe, especially when the studies that say it's safe are supported by the big um, seed producers. So in a, in a reasonable world, when a respected scientist reaches a conclusion that uh, the product is not safe, other people will, will repeat the studies and try to get to see how they got those results and whether they can replicate the results. Replication is a very important part of science. If you can't replicate the results, then, you know, what's going on? Why did one person get it and the other person not get it? But these, so what I'm finding from looking at the literature is that there is no effort to replicate studies which show adverse effects. And in my own investigations, I've, I found at least 26 studies that had advert, these are animal feeding studies, that had adverse effects. And I cannot find any replication of this or any government agency that says, well, we've got to take these studies very seriously and we've got to start putting money to see whether or not we are going to be getting replication of these studies. Um, so to me, that's an important problem in, uh, in bringing the public confidence around a new technology um, is to have replicated studies. But uh, certainly the, um, the group in France have done studies that no one else has done, and they've found some adverse effects, serolini, and um, they've been mistreated by the rest of the scientific community. Uh, you know, there, one paper was uh, retracted from a journal after it was peer-reviewed and, and approved by the reviewers. After a year of pressure by Monsanto, and um, it was pulled out of the journal, pulled out. Uh, not because there were mistakes in it, not because there were violations of ethics, but because the results were not definitive, according to the journal editor. That's a very unusual reason to retract a paper. So I have to assume as a, as a scientist, a social scientist, that that paper was retracted for political reasons and not for scientific reasons. We have a lot of experience with um, products from corporations that have been advanced by funded research from those corporations. Primarily, the tobacco industry has set up its own non-for-profit research institutes to show that secondhand smoke was safe, tobacco was safe. We've had similar institutes set up by the lead industry to show that lead was safe uh, for many, many years, prevented lead from being removed from gasoline, from other places where children consumed the lead. So um, we have a lot of experience with how corporations try to protect their products by influencing the science. And the same is happening in this agricultural biotechnology industry. And the best way we have to learn about the practices of corporations is through the documents that are filed during litigation. So when the tobacco industry was litigated by the attorney generals from a number of states, 
they had to produce discovery documents. These are the documents that the court requires them to produce so that the plaintiff's attorneys can see what's going on, what the company is hiding or not hiding. So these discovery documents have now been uh, revealed uh, in Monsanto's uh, case. And those documents reveal uh, corporate malfeasance uh, by the company uh, in trying to influence the science uh, behind uh, risk assessment. Uh, and the more we learn about it, the more we realize that this uh, is a real phenomenon in biotechnology as it was in the tobacco uh, uh, you know, in the tobacco litigation and the lead litigation, which um, has revealed much about the way in which uh, corporations try to uh, influence the scientific community. I'm of the opinion that um, molecular breeding is not necessarily all bad or all good. That there could be some uses of it which could meet a rigorous uh, assessment of its value and risk. And my research has looked at certain of these products and um, one of them is um, a method for activating the plant's immune system to resist viruses. Now, plants, like humans, have an immune system. And we activate the human immune system by um, the use of vaccines to resist viruses. And you can do the same thing with plants. So, uh, especially in Hawaii, they had a terrible outbreak in the papaya uh, industry of ring spot virus. And somebody came up with the idea of activating the plant's immune system and allowing the plant to develop its own resistance to the ring spot virus. So they used biotechnology to activate the plant's immune system without putting in foreign proteins, without putting in new in a sense, new properties the way they would with herbicide resistant or insect resistant. And I, and I believe that so far that has proven to be a successful use of biotechnology and not uh, without uh, any hazards that I've been able to determine. So that would be one, one way you can get biotechnology to help out. Now, as far as golden rice, which is the biofortified rice, the concept, you know, for some people was a good concept. We, f we fortify our food all the time. You buy milk, it says fortified with calcium, vitamin C, or calcium, whatever. So they just add that to the product. Question is, can you add something to the um, genome of the seed so that when we eat the plant, when we eat the rice, we're getting vitamin A, which we ordinarily would not be able to get much of at all, that we could get a more complete diet and for people living in certain regions of the world where they don't get access to um, green plants um, with vitamin A, um, you know, that they could get the vitamin A in, in the rice. So the concept is a reasonable concept, although some people would say don't try to put all the nutritional value in one plant, they should be, uh, they should be given the, uh, the opportunity to grow uh, spinach and place, 
so they can get a full range. But anyway, meanwhile, there's a lot of children dying or at least uh, be, uh, you know, without vitamin A, they, they go through blindness. So the concept was a good concept. They've been working on this for 18 years. In 1980, Time Magazine had the front cover devoted to the person who invented golden rice. But it's not ready for prime time. And there are reasons. It's either not safe enough, yet proven safe enough, or uh, it's not effective enough. You have to eat too much of the rice. So it's still in, in process. It, maybe it can be done safely. I, I wouldn't want to predict one way or the other. Um, but if you can save children from blindness by some biofortification method, I'm all for it as long as it's proven uh, safe and not harmful. Thank <music> you.